Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss in detail about non-probability sampling techniques. The first one is convenience sampling. In convenience sampling, the sample is chosen based on ease of access, on how easy it is to pick up that sample point. So, when a sample point is conveniently available to the researcher, the researcher picks that up. Let's say you want to understand the income, the income trends or the annual incomes of middle class. So you might not go anywhere, but maybe you just pick up a neighborhood because it is convenient for you and that will be a convenient sampling technique. The next one is purposive sampling or judgmental sampling. It is based on researchers judgment who he thinks is appropriate for the study. Let's say the researcher is interested in studying beggars. So, and he knows some particular areas around him, which are where beggars are most commonly found. So, because he knows these particular areas and he thinks that these are the only areas where beggars could be found, hence it is biased because it is based on his judgment because he thinks that beggars are found only in these three areas around him. Hence, it is judgmental sampling. Next up, we have snowball sampling. In snowball sampling, your existing subject under study recruits the further, recruits the future subjects. Let us see this diagram to understand it more clearly. Let's say this is the first sample point that you picked up, A. Now, A will go further and collect data from his three known people, B, C, D. Now, B will further pick up samples and collect data from his three known people. Similarly, C will also recruit and find data from his three known people and D as well. So this is known as snowball sampling. Now snowball sampling is majorly used when the data is difficult to collect. Let us say that you want to discuss some rare... Let us say you want to... Let us say you want to study a disease which is very rare. So if you are the researcher, you might not be able to access the data or you might not be able to find out who has that rare disease. But let's say A has that rare disease. A would certainly be in contact with some of the people who have the same disease. This is very likely situation. Hence, it becomes easier to collect the data in such a case. Moving ahead, we have quota sampling. In quota sampling, the population is divided into subgroups or strata based on characteristics, same as how we did in stratified sampling. But in this case, now the sample, once the stratas are divided, the sample is picked from these stratas based on the convenience of the research. Since it is picked up, from the convenience of the researcher, there is some bias and hence it is a part of non-probability sampling. Let us look at one quick example. Let us say we divide the population into three subgroups, which is males under 50, females under 50 and people who are age of 50 plus. But now you have divided into stratas, but from this, you say that I will pick up data points only from my neighborhood. So that comes under your convenience. Hence, it is a non-probability sampling. Now we will revise probability and non-probability sampling quickly with the help of some visualization. So, Simple random sampling is about randomly picking up any points from your data. So we randomly picked up the points.
points. In systematic sampling, we choose a starting point, let's say the second one, and then at fixed intervals, we pick the sample. So our starting point is second and we are taking a gap of two people. So next we pick up is fifth. Second, fifth, then we pick up eighth. So there's a difference of three. Now we will pick up the 11th person and then we will pick up the 14th person. So this is your systematic sampling. We are picking up samples from we are picking up samples in a fixed interval starting from a random starting point. In stratified sampling, the data is first divided into in stratified sampling, data is first divided into subgroups and then samples are taken randomly from these subgroups. In cluster sampling, the data is divided into clusters. So we have here five clusters, right? And from these five clusters, we picked only these two clusters to be the part of our sample. Now we will quickly revise Now on to non-probability sampling revision. So in convenience sampling, as we discussed, it is based on researcher's convenience. So maybe he's picking up points from his neighborhood itself. Next up is purposive sampling. It is based on his judgment. Based on his subjective judgment, he thinks that this person is most appropriate. This person is most appropriate for my study. So he picks only those people. In snowball sampling, the researcher, the researcher picks up just few samples once and then those, those sample points or those people then further recruit the future prospects, the future respondents. And next up we have quota sampling. So, first the data is divided into subgroups and then based on the researcher's convenience, the sample is picked up from these quotas. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section. Thank you.